administration received accolades at the G20 summit in Brazil. Recall that the International Monetary Fund's Cristalina Jojiva's comments at the summit raised the tempo on economic activities. Nigeria's quest to boost crude oil production to achieve mega fund generation is on course as NNPC Limited, an indigenous joint venture, ramps up output at its offshore in Biosu State. What is the latest you've heard about the tax reforms bill? The House of Representatives has held an interactive session just to assure that the proposed tax reforms by the Tinibu administration will not increase the tax burden on Nigerians but expand the nation's tax base by leveraging technology. These are the issues Business 24 will focus on in this episode. Besides this, we have other matters to look into like our complementary segment which is the export tips. Welcome to Business 24. I am Vivian Ezadifi. Welcome back. And the Business 24 train takes off now as Nigerians' quest to boost crude oil production is yielding positive results as an NMPC Limited and Indigenous joint venture ramps up output at its offshore in Bielsa State and in what can be described as a major boost for Nigerians' crude oil production, revenue generation and economic growth effort. The NMPC Limited has officially unveiled its latest crude oil grid, the Utapete Crude Oil Blend, in the international crude oil markets. This sounds cheering and motivating, I guess. Tokwa Labi is earnestly waiting to tell us how this materialized. Over to you, Tokwe. With plans to scale up to 100,000 barrels per day, Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Oil, Henneke Lupubiri emphasized the strategic importance of the facility, stating that ongoing work reflects collective efforts towards increasing Nigeria's crude oil production. The minister said, Efforts and commitment is a vital step towards achieving Nigeria's national production targets. This is what um, you know, strong partnership you know, can do between NNPC and their local partners. They called that in the last um, one of the last events we had, you know, in Abuja, first EMV was uh, you know exhibited as you know one of the most successful indigenous, you know. Um, Companies and that was made possible by the partnership between the NNPC and then CMP. And since then, you know, we've been trying to come and see uh, things for ourselves. We're here today, we're seeing that, you know, they are doing, you know, about 60,000 pounds a day, which is very, very, you know, commendable. And in there, we want to use the opportunity to call on other, you know, players in the industry to please also do what, you know, uh, this company is doing. And also to say that we are committed to ensuring that we we'll get to, you know, minimum of 2 million barrels by the end of December. As you can recall that um, our 2025, you know, budget is predicated on, you know, the assumption of 2.06 you know, million barrels a day. And we believe that it's achievable. And the uh, ultimate target is to see how we can get 2.5 million barrels to 3 million barrels, you know, uh, by the year 2025. Chief Upstream Investment Officer, of NNPC Limited Upstream Investment Management Services, Balawundi assured the Minister of the Joint Ventures Alignment with National Objectives. The company reaffirmed commitments to deliver results and production in line with federal government's resolve, adding that with the support of partners and ongoing depotonaking initiatives, achieving 100,000 barrels per day in record time is sure. So in line with the overriding mandate given to the industry under the leadership of the honor of minister of petroleum oil um, the budget of nigeria is anchored for 2025 on 2.06 million barrel what that means is that whatever we need to do from now to that time we must deliver on that the commitment we made and i'm going to repeat it to the honor of minister is that we are going to achieve that 
Last two, we have given the honor of Venice and the entire Nigeria under the leadership of the GCO that we are going to hit 2 million barrels by December. The journey to that has already begun. And part of that beginning is what you saw two days ago. We spot a well on Songhai for exploration, leading to additional production. You've heard in the first EMP, JB, by the end of 2025, we're going to go to 70,000 barrels. And subsequently, we increased toward the 100,000 barrel addition. Everything are in play, at, at play. We are not uh, procrastinating, we are acting. So we have moved away from PowerPoint to action point, and we are heading to 100,000 barrels. And by the grace of God, we don't see anything stopping us. The minister's mandate is quite clear. The government mandate is quite clear. 100,000 barrels for this asset within a short period of time is achievable. And that's a commitment that First MPJV is giving to the minister. The NMPC First EMP joint venture is at a 60,000 barrels a day level. We have committed to getting to 70, and also we are committing to go to 100,000 barrels a day. Of course, that's going to happen with additional investments. Like the Honorable Minister said, there's some work we are doing on this FPSO to the bottleneck. And in our partnership with NMPC, we'll make that happen. And we took a commitment that we will take all our decisions before the uh, before end of November, going into December, so that we can get that additional oil. The Minister said, let's make it happen in 2025, before the end of 2025. We'll do all we can. But really, the target is how do we add get to 100,000 barrels a day. So by 11 kilometers away, we'll fly over the, the drilling rig. That will add production. But really, it's just to emphasize that it's a partnership that started almost seven, eight, nine years ago. It's a strong partnership between ourselves and NMPC. It's a partnership where the support has always been there. And I think what we should always do is produce safely and add that production. So the promise is, get to 70 and then go on the way to 100,000 barrels a day, as well as gas production in addition. I want to happy, you know, to hear that, um, you know, first EMP, you know, and uh, uh, the partners are now embarking on a drilling campaign of about 23, you know, uh, wells. And you know what that means? The only way we can increase production is to ensure that we, you know, have a sustainable, you know, a drilling campaign. And I'm very happy that, you know, you can see from here, you know, the rig that is, you know, uh, about 11 kilometers, you know, from here. And so I want to thank, you know, uh, everybody, all the stakeholders. I saw some Bayasa boys who are working here. This is what we're talking about. When you come to a place, it's good that you work with all the stakeholders. And the communities are happy, government is happy, your partners are happy. I will continue to do what we need to do to ensure that we sustain this momentum. Lopubiri noted that the project underscores the capability of indigenous companies to deliver on ambitious targets. Key players believe the milestones achieved are a testament to NNPC Limited's determination to deliver results through strategic partnerships and innovative approaches. The minister lauded the role of joint ventures like the NNPC Limited First Exploration and Production Partnership and urged other indigenous operators to leverage the opportunities presented by ongoing reforms to further the country's energy objectives. And in what can be described as a major boost for Nigeria's crude oil production, revenue generation and economic growth efforts, the NNPC Limited has officially unveiled its latest crude oil grade, the Utapati crude oil blend in the international crude oil market. At the European Crude Conference in London, United Kingdom, Managing Director NNPC Exploration and Production Limited, Nicholas Foucault, described the introduction of the Utapati crude oil blend into the market as a significant milestone for Nigeria's crude oil export to the global energy market. The refiners and many interested uh, buyers to come in so that we can, we can have a term contract. Instead of running in a spot, we can guarantee that term contract and then uh, we are now running around 40,000 barrels uh, per day. Good to hear that Nigeria is achieving this feat. And from oil and gas, let's talk about taxation. 
the House of Representatives has conducted an interactive session on the four tax reform bills submitted to the National Assembly by President Bola Tinubu with the federal government assuring Nigerians that the proposed tax reforms by the Tinubu administration will not increase the tax burden on Nigerians but expands the nation's tax base by leveraging technology. Again, Tokma Labi tells us more. The federal government is assuring Nigerians that tax reforms being proposed by the Tinubu administration will not increase the tax burden on Nigerians, but expand the nation's tax base by leveraging on technology. This is coming at an interactive session at the House of Representatives on the four tax reform bills submitted to the National Assembly by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Streamlining taxes should aim at incentivizing key sectors where taxation drives innovation, empowers businesses and uplifts the most vulnerable among us. In this regard, we expect more insight into how tax reforms incentivize the digital economy, how it supports small businesses and low-income households, and more importantly, how the zero-rated value-added tax works or should work. In simple terms, what mischief do we intend to cure? What is the existing tax regime? And where do we want to go from here? This tax reform represents a, a shift towards a sustainable fiscal framework, including where effective taxation is a tool for creating opportunities, reducing inequalities, and enabling every citizen to thrive. In conclusion, as these bills proceed through the legislative process, there will be opportunities for Nigerians to air their views and actively participate in shaping the final outcome. Advocacy will also play a pivotal role in ensuring that citizens understand the objectives and benefits of this reform. The four executive bills which have only passed first reading in Parliament are the Nigerian Tax Bill 2024, the Tax Administration Bill, the Nigerian Revenue Service Establishment Bill, and the Joint Revenue Board Establishment Bill. We are here today as an observer to listen to the process of law because our duty is only implementation. We are not a policy formulator. Uh, we only listen and uh, whatever the law that is passed down to us, we implement. And as we start this wonderful legislative and historic moment, I pray Almighty God guides all of us that at the end of the day, the products that we will have after this interactive will be the benefit and betterment of our nation. The growth that we have been talking about is based on a low threshold, having already come down to that level. We are growing at a rate of 3%, sometimes slightly lower. And our population is growing at about 3%, meaning that the growth rate we are generating is very marginal. We do not have the revenue to, we do not have the revenue to reignite the process of growth. And I think this sets the background to the economic stabilization bill that it is your privilege to debate and eventually uh, give us new tax codes that will generate the revenue that will sustain a more prosperous and inclusively growing Nigeria. There are issues within the bill that a closer look will, will give a clearer picture. For instance, the most contentious issue is the issue of BAT. Yes. If you take the sharing up Michio, the 20% derivation have never been used in sharing but in Nigeria in the last 10, 20 years. So because it's appealing to say it's okay, the derivation is 20%, now let's jack it to 60%. But the most essential thing is, is beyond what they said, that they will use technology to derive, to drive the derivation. 
of the consumption of a particular commodity. Just listening to everybody and building the capacity to implement. So we are confident that as a country, once we are willing to do something, we get it done. Anything that Nigeria is struggling to do, Nigeria never intended to do it. So the post most analysis are also there with simulation of war revenues will go up, the ones that will come down. One point I have to make here that is very important is that even for the richest people, their tax burden will come down. So we are trying to increase tax revenue without increasing the tax burden on anyone. The poorest people will find significant reduction in their tax burden. Middle class, a little bit less reduction. Even the upper class and companies, large and small, we see a reduction in their tax burden. When you see tax rate going up here, the ones that are going down are far more than the little that is going up. I need to make that, because it was a promise we made and that Mr. President made at the beginning. And we want to be honest and sincere with the Nigerian people. And I challenge anyone that has done the calculation to come to us and say, we lied. We had session with CFOs. Those are the guys who play with numbers. We're having another one day after tomorrow. We had more than 300 companies represented. Have you wondered that Manufacturer Association of Nigeria, Chambers of Commerce have not complained? We sat down with them for more than the whole one year. We were playing the numbers with them. They are very excited about the reforms. And that's just to give you the assurance. Why we don't claim that we have all the knowledge and we do not suggest that our proposals are perfect, we can guarantee you that they move Nigeria in the right direction and a win-win for everyone. While the bills seek to harmonize tax administration in Nigeria, there are fears about provisions relating to VAT sharing formula for states based on derivation. I think that the essence of all these bills is to enhance our revenue and, of course, to block leakages. So I will appreciate my colleagues to have open minds towards it. I will appreciate the situation where we are all, uh, we are all uh, grounded in it, clause by clause, so that we will speak with, to facts rather than sentiments. Submission of the transmission of those bills to the National Assembly should be a wake-up call to legislators, to members of the executive at all levels, to begin to think of how to diversify their respective economies. They should begin to think about expanding the tax net, begin to think of how to attract investors locally and internationally, begin to think about joint projects. I believe when we think in this direction, we'll be expanding the tax base and rely less on the federal allocation to states that seems to be scary to many of our leaders. But I want to thank Mr. Speaker for this opportunity for us to have an interaction with experts so we also better understand the issues involved in these bills so that when we get to the floor of the House, we'll be able to contribute meaningfully productively and constructively. Speaker Tajuddin Abbas notes that the intense public debate generated by the bills reflects their importance in the quest to sanitize tax administration in the country. Nigeria, being Africa's second largest economy, struggles with a tax to GDP ratio of just 6%, far below the global average and the World Bank's minimum benchmark of 15% for sustainable development. This is a challenge we must address if we are to reduce our reliance on debt financing, ensure fiscal stability, and secure our future as a nation. The proposed tax reform bills aim to diversify our revenue base, promote equity, and foster an enabling environment for investment and innovation. However, as representatives of the people, we must approach these reforms thoughtfully, understanding their potential implications for every segment of our society. Taxes should be fair, 
transparent, and justifiable. Balancing the need for public revenue with the burdens they impose on individuals and businesses. Lawmakers were assured that the bills do not seek to undermine any region of the country nor merge the Nigeria Customs Service with the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Rather, they are expected to promote trade facilitation and integrate the operations of revenue collecting agencies. For Business 24, talk by Alabi. When you hear the word Hamatan, does business come to your mind? Responses might vary, but of course, certain businesses thrive. The spa ventures are seeing some traffic now. What is responsible? Let's now hear from Kule Adeye. The Hamatan is setting in gradually, and I know you will wonder how it is connected to business. Without equivocation, there are connections. Cool and dry wind blow. The skin and the leaves are always at the receiving end. Consequently, there is surge in consultation for remedy to these skin anomalies. Those who deal in cosmetics and owners of beauty spa outfits advise on the way to go. For this Hamatan season, I will tell you, love your water. I know it sounds cliche and it seems like we're always talking about water. But if you're hydrated, it shows even on your lips. If you see somebody who isn't having any lip balm, but they are just really hydrated, it shows even in your skin, you know. So this is a season where you will love your oils. This is a season where for like me, I love my shea butters. I love my argan oils, you know, like I love like the natural, natural oil based products. And if you're using like a light moisturizer, forgetting that, okay, we are already living the heat season. So this is the period where your skin is going to be telling you because you feel it in your tightness, you, you feel it. And so just lather on enough oil. If you're somebody who wants to go the extra mile, put a bit of oil, coconut oil, even in your bath water before you have your bath and then you come out, you're already sealing in moisture. So for this season, hydrate properly, avoid the sun because it's going to be more intense sometimes, use your sunscreen, and it doesn't matter whether if there's this notion, only light, no. Dark, light, brown, mid, whatever skin tone you have, use your sunscreen, use your oils, hydrate properly, see a professional if you need to. It is also a period the youths are gainfully engaged. Starting the trade, though capital intensive, there are still rooms for some flexibilities. Deborah Omali, who has been running a beauty and spa outfit for over a decade, gives a perspective of what operates in the industry. The first thing is your passion. You know, your passion must drive you. And then we all know, you know, setting up a, a beauty aesthetics is very, very capital intensive, but start small. I will give you a brief, just a brief history of how I started. I knew I always wanted to do this. Even when I was in school, I would engage in making hair and doing stuff for my colleagues. And so when I knew I was ready to start this business, I didn't just get up with a huge sum of money. And then I started buying equipment, started buying things. I started with buying the basic things that I knew I would need. And I would store them at home. You know, if I see a hand dryer that looks nice, maybe I found it in one shop or I travel, you know, on the wayside, I'll take out of whatever I was supposed to use to shop and then I'll buy. And so before I set up this place, I already almost had a room full of items that I needed to start with. I wasn't waiting for the millions. And just start. Just start. There are people in Wusi Market that are doing this so well and they are very good. Start. It's not about having a fancy location, having a fancy aesthetics. Sometimes that little startup grounds you in the business. You make your mistakes when you are little so that as you grow, you get better and you're consistent. You know, and with the way the economy is going, I tell you, if people knew the resources you could make from just being a hairdresser's, you know, sometimes we talk about the minimum wage, we talk about this, we talk, some of them earn double, threefold of that amount that you will not get maybe in a regular organization. So it's capital intensive, yes, but there is no competition in life. Whatever you have, start with it. From her submissions, opportunities in this industry are endless. 
Kunle Adeyeye for Business 24. We're done with Business 24 for the week. I am Vivian Ezadevi. See you some other times.